Hi, I'm Revital Schmeling and this is Opera Talk, Livermore Valley Opera's production that brings the artist to your home. Our guest today is known for her shiny and bright voice. She performs all over the United States and we were lucky to have her here in Livermore two years ago. We want to welcome our fourth guest of Opera Talk, Elena Galvan. Let's just dive in into the interview. We're so lucky to have you. Uh, you've been doing, when you were here in Livermore, you've been doing um, also master classes in yeah. uh, our choir in high schools and middle schools. So, we know you very well, but oh, I'm so glad. <laughs> pleasure to do it. <laughs> so I want to ask you, uh, where are you now? Where do you live? Where are you staying? Sure. So I live permanently in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, by the beach, which is very nice, if I do say so myself, uh, with my husband and my cat, who hopefully you won't hear in the background of this interview. But yeah, we, we're down in Florida and we travel to all our gigs from here. So you are our fourth guest. We had before uh, a bass singer, a tenor, a uh, mezzo-soprano, and now you. So maybe you can um, help us understand more about the voices and where are you standing over there? Absolutely, absolutely. So a soprano, as you may know if you sing in a choir in your school, it's the top voice of the choir, right? We have soprano, alto, tenor and bass. So in opera, it's a little bit similar, but just more delineations or variations of the same thing. So soprano, we're the highest voice, we get all those high notes, but there are different kinds of soprano within that. Some that sing in big operas with gigantic orchestras of 70 pieces, and then some who are more suited to lighter orchestras where they don't have to carry as far. Uh, those are sort of lighter sopranos. So I'm somewhere in the middle of a lyric soprano and a coloratura soprano. And you mentioned before uh, in choir, they have soprano, alto, but do you say alto in the opera world or do you say mezzo soprano? That's a great point. So no, in the opera world, we call it mezzo soprano, which basically means middle soprano in Italian. So it's a little bit different for us when we're in opera. And Regarding the, the, uh, the variation of the soprano voice, can you elaborate a little bit more about your voice type? Because it's very interesting um, to, we're gonna hear it in a second, but if you can oh, tell great. about it a little bit more. Yes, absolutely. So coloratura, I threw you two terms, right? Lyric soprano and coloratura soprano. Coloratura means they tend to go really, really high. If you ever heard the Queen of the Night aria, whoo, they get way up there. They're doing lots of like, it's basically vocal acrobatics and fireworks. They do a lot of those types of things. And then lyric sopranos tend to have all those beautiful melodies with the long, long lines and less moving around as the coloraturas do. Great. So you are a coloratura soprano and we're gonna hear uh, one example. Um, we're gonna watch you singing Adele from the opera of Leather Mouse. And if you can, share it with us a little bit after we see it about the character and uh, where did you perform it? Okay, let's stay together. <laughs> It's just amazing. So I think 
and also all those flipping and uh, singing very, very fast. So that's yeah. what you do, right? <laughs> yes, that's the deal. <laughs> and I wanted to ask you, and it's a question that uh, I get a lot. Did you already always have a high voice or it's something you had to develop and train for? Definitely both. So even, you know, back when I was a kid singing in my school choirs, I always had a higher voice, but definitely was not trained yet to do all the extreme high and with how resonant and, and heavy we have to sing in opera. So that's definitely training that I did during during my undergraduate degree and my graduate degree in vocal performance helped develop that and get it higher and higher and more agile. So a little bit of both. <laughs> so you would mention that you did uh, undergrad and grad school. So if you can share with us your career path, how did you start if it was in a choir and then just walk us through your, uh, your path. Sure, absolutely. So I always loved singing. My, both of my parents are musicians, so I was around it a lot when I was young. So I sang in choirs all the time at church or at school and then started doing musicals during high school and, and middle school. Then I knew I wanted to go to school for music and I went to Ithaca College for music education and vocal performance. And then I was in my first opera my sophomore year of college and I just fell in love with it. I fell in love with the whole thing and never stopped. So after undergrad, I went to San Francisco Conservatory of Music for my grad school and then my first professional jobs were during grad school and just kept going after that. So how many years do you have in the profession? Uh, I think about 10 now. So it's, it's been a while. It's been really exciting. Had, to, had opportunities to travel all over the United States performing, got to go to Hawaii last year to perform, which was lovely. Uh, and even a bit in Italy as well. Um, you mentioned before that you live in Florida with your husband and cat. So I'm going to be a little bit uh, direct and ask, <laughs> how do you do it? I know it's, this is for school kids. We need to remember this. But how do you do all the traveling with a husband and home? <laughs> it's <laughs> definitely. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's, it's really hard being away from my husband so much. Right. But we both so he's also a singer he's a tenor as well we met in undergrad during an opera actually so we've sort of been through the whole process of school and going to programs with opera companies and then working in opera companies together sort of side by side so we've had a lot of practice being far away for a lot of time but now luckily that we're a little more established the gigs, the, the productions that you go be a part of, they're not as long. So usually it's maybe three to four weeks away, which is much better than say nine months of the year where you're in programs with opera. So now it's a little easier. I definitely miss my cat all the time too, which <laughs> gets hard because she can't travel to me to visit. So <laughs> I, so the opera that we just watched, The Fledermaus, Mouse, is originally in German. And, but I also heard uh, the English versions of the same opera. So did you have uh, an opportunity to sing the same opera in English as well? Yeah, actually, I, I well, let me think. So this, this Flader Mouse was in German, but I've done scenes from that opera also in English. And actually another one we did at that season of San Jose, um, Hensel and Gretel. That's often done in German and sometimes English. But I don't know if I've ever done the whole a whole piece in two languages. I'm gonna I've been in a piece that has seven languages in it, but <laughs> I'm gonna ask you another question right now. Um, I ask uh, all our guests. I ask the same question: Which mm -hmm. is the most favorite language for you to sing in, and which is the least favorite language for you to sing in? <laughs> so, favorite hands down Italian. It's just, it's just made for singing. It's made for the voice and it's so, it feels so good to sing. Um, I didn't used to like singing in German, but now after a couple of shows, it's, I've gotten it under my belt and it feels much better now. Actually, my least favorite is English. We have so many diphthongs and hard consonants that sometimes it's, it's really hard to sing. It's funny because uh, you are, yeah, everybody said, I think not everybody 
but we had uh, Nicola Prince said mm -hmm. English was her least, and also Chris Bozeka said it, it's her <laughs> least favorite. Uh, and <laughs> it's, it's hard because this is your language, and you're supposed to be right and and feel comfortable more than the Italian, German, and uh, and French. Right. And still, it's very hard to to sing in English, which is very yeah. interesting. So talking about languages, when you performed here in Livermore Valley Opera with the, the abduction of the Seraglio from the Strokes, sorry, the abduction from the Seraglio, uh, this, this was a nice production. It was a Zingspiel opera, which means there were a lot of talking in between the singing. The talking was in English and the singing were, uh, was in German. So we're gonna see uh, a part of it and I'm going to talk about what we're seeing later. Awesome. The Pasha's gone and I got rid of Osmin. I have news that will delight you. What for? Quick, out with it. How about a nice big kiss? Oh, first the news. Belmonte has arrived and he's here in the palace. Belmonte's here? Oh, Padrillo, that deserves a big kiss. Now, I have to tell Constanza. No, 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 not so fast, not so fast. And Monte has a ship waiting nearby, and we've arranged to abduct you both tonight at midnight. But what about Osmin? <laughs> I'll take care of Osmin with this little sleeping potion. <laughs> you just make sure Constanza's ready, and I'll wait for Belmonte. <laughs> Watching this, see you talking as well. That means that when you are as an opera singer, you're not only singing, you're also acting, right? It's part of, of, of being an opera singer. Absolutely. So I want to show you some photos of you from, from different operas. And you, if you can share with us your character very, very uh, briefly and what you were doing in the photo. Sure. It's a fun game. Yeah. <laughs> if you remember. I love this show. Okay, so this was 
uh, at Florida Grand Opera in Umbalo in Mascara by Verdi, which is the masked ball. So I actually play a 12 year old boy in this show. So I got to run around like a crazy kid and a boy, which I don't get to do in my real life, obviously. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to talk about this photo because you are here and we can see uh, the orchestra, which is so different from opera. If you can talk about the difference between singing like this and singing opera. Absolutely. So this was with a great ensemble in Miami, Florida called the New Deco Ensemble. And it's a basically a chamber orchestra, which means it's a smaller orchestra. So the way they did their show is I got to stand in with them and in this concert with people sitting all around us, sing right there with them. Whereas in opera, they're usually in the pit or not seen by the audience. In this kind of performance, you get to see all the aspects of the of the music making. Very nice. Next. Oh, this is a beautiful picture. I just wanted to include it because you are oh. you have a lovely dress there and <laughs> a lovely place. If you can talk about where did you, uh, yeah, where did you take this, this picture? Yeah, so this was Town Hall, I think it's, no, City Hall in San Francisco. So my photographer, we were, we wanted to take some pictures because this dress is beautiful and I needed some for performances. And she suggested this location and found this beautiful little spot where it looks like I'm in a palace or something. Was, it was fun. Very beautiful. <laughs> I just want to include that. <laughs> oh, okay. What's that? <laughs> oh. So this concert was quite possibly one of the favorite concerts I've ever performed in. It was called the Diva Cage Match. And it was in Minneapolis and we went and we actually got to sing in a boxing ring as if we were singing off, like kind of like the voice style shows. So I was singing to the audience through the ropes of the boxing ring and it was, man, it was fun. <laughs> so that was a match between singers? Yep, so okay. two sopranos got paired up, uh, me and another one, and we would each sing an aria from a show and sort of like fake fight it out with our voices and then it was a hoot. <laughs> Very nice. What's that? You're a little girl. Oh. Yes, yeah. so again, where I get to play a kid, but this time a girl. So this was in Hansel and Gretel at Opera San Jose, and I get to play this little girl, and I think this is when we're lost in the forest. And we're calling to the cuckoo birds. So it was, I love that one too. And last one. <laughs> so this was also from Deep Flater Mouse at Opera San Jose, just in a different scene. So in the show, I'm a maid and I'm actually getting a piece of mail telling me that I get to go to a fancy ball. So she's very excited about that. And I got to throw myself all over that fun little chaise lounge. <laughs> and we saw you singing at the um, at the at ball. the bar the party the ball yeah very nice okay great beautiful beautiful um let's talk a little bit about technique every singer has their own way of warming up before a show or a concert if you can share with mm -hmm. us maybe two or three exercises or or uh things that you do before you warm up no, but sorry, sure. not, so, not before, before, before a concert or an opera. So most, well, now I'd say pretty much every show, I always want to do something physical. Yoga is really nice. I do spinning classes or biking, stuff like that. Something to get your whole body moving because we need our whole body strength and energy to go out and perform the way we do. So I always do that. And then when I get to the theater, before we get all costumed up and made up, I always start with a lip trill. Do that a bunch of times up and down. Then I really like to start with an E vowel because it's nice and closed. So usually I'll, should I just sing one? I'll just sing one. B, B, B is one that I do take it way up high, way down low, then do some scales. B, 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 up and down, way down and up. And yeah, you don't sing for very long because operas are long. So I usually practice, well, warm up for about 10 to 15 minutes, do some more physical stuff, and then 
you get on stage. Very nice. And uh, what are you doing now? I mean, this is Corona coronavirus day. You're not performing right now. Uh, how do you stay motivated? What do you do? Do you practice? Uh, what's your routine right now? Well, it's, it's definitely a different routine than normal because I, I, my husband and I were just talking about this the other day that we haven't flown or traveled anywhere since March. Like most people, we have to stay home and not travel. And that's very unusual for us who are constantly going out and performing. Um, I'm very lucky. Uh, I'm a voice teacher as well. So I teach all of my private students on the internet through Zoom like we are right now. Uh, and so I've been maintaining my studio here while at home. And then having the opportunity to do a lot of virtual performances. So I've sung with about three or four different companies now doing virtual recitals where I get to pre-record things um, and send them in. I'm doing a couple with Livermore Valley Opera coming up soon. And I actually got to do a filmed version, fully filmed version of Gianni Schicchi, a Puccini opera with Opera Ithaca that's I think still available for streaming. And we did this whole filmed version of it, which was kind of a different way than usual than performing, but still got to sing the things I love to sing and just practice. I mean, I, I like practicing every day. It's, you know, we perform for ourselves in some way, even though we can't perform for our audiences like we usually do. And we're just, we're hoping the world gets better so we can get back on stage. <laughs> So we're gonna now look at the example of what you did with Livermore Valley Opera. And let's talk about where you uh, recorded it later on. So that was in my bedroom. I just put up a big sheet. We bought this recording rig. So put up a big sheet so the wall was covered. And then we have a, a ring light, one of those, well, I'm using it right now, one of those lights to make it look nice. And then I just stood there in my living room recording on my phone. So <laughs> what about the neighbors? Yes. Well, luckily, we only have one, no, two neighbors, no, one neighbor on one side and we don't share walls in that room. So luckily it's nice. Sometimes when I sing in here, you know, if I'm walking around the house doing dishes, I sing to myself. Sometimes it's too loud and I realize because they have a baby too. So <laughs> um, I wanted to ask you, why did you choose opera? I mean, I, I guess you can sing everything you want, different styles. So why opera, why not, uh, for example, a music theater or a different style? Yeah, well, it's interesting because I, I started out, I, I still love, but started out really loving musical theater. And that's what I had experience with in school. But I, you know, the way that they, you know, belt and it's really loud and brassy. I just never, my voice never really did that well. I was always more suited to classical singing. And so 
I loved singing in other languages, which also helped. So when I got to college, once I actually once saw an opera with my colleagues in it and was in one, it's really cool to see that how much detail is put into every little thing, the makeup, the wigs, the the backdrop and how they paint it down to the all musicians and the orchestra and then us on stage and the conductor. And it just seemed like this wonderful mesh of everything arts all in one thing, which was so cool to me and, and still is. It's exciting, you know, when all the pieces come together. So I, uh, I guess I was just drawn to it and yeah. Do you have something in the opera world that you don't like? That I don't like? Mm, I don't like that I don't get to see all the performances all the time. <laughs> I wish I could just do a little tour of every opera house in the world and go see it. Um, and I wish there were more new operas around. I feel like we don't see enough new opera composers in the way that, you know, artists back in Mozart's time were just cranking out music all the time and composing. And it was, it was a stamp in the culture. Everyone knew who they were and what music they were producing. I wish that were more integrated into our society now. I, I really wish they would love it like we do. <laughs> um, before we say goodbye, I have a few quick questions. It's it's got, it's okay. like a fly around. I'm gonna ask you something versus something, and you say what you prefer. So like right to left, and then you say what you choose. Left. Left. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now I know the answer for this one: dog or cat? Cat. Yeah. Yeah. I I knew it. A big party <laughs> or a small gathering? Small gathering. Football or baseball? Baseball? Yeah, you don't. Yeah, no, you can say it. Like, no, yeah. <laughs> Netflix or YouTube? Ooh, Netflix. All right. Um, ocean or mountains? Ocean. Love the ocean. Facebook or Twitter? Ooh, neither. Neither. Okay. Um, big party. Oh, I had that. Sorry. New clothes or new phone? Ooh, ooh, new clothes. Okay, new clothes, that's nice. Only online shopping or shopping in a store? Oh, I like online shopping. Really? Okay, that's scary yeah, to me. surprise. Very scary <laughs> to me. Uh, ninjas versus pirates? Pirates, but I don't know why. Hmm. I knew it as well. Uh, TV shows or movies? Mm, oh, this is hard. Movies. Okay, another two. Pancake or waffle? Waffle. waffle. And then tr train or airplane? Plane. Plane, yeah. Even though I don't love it, but fine. <laughs> <laughs> Especially now. Thank you, Elena, for interviewing with us today. And we hope to see you again in our main stage very, very soon. I hope so too. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you all for tuning in. I'm Revital Schmeling, and this is Livermore Valley Opera's production, Opera Talk. <laughs>